I want to talk about the essence of deliverance and spiritual warfare training. Why deliverance and spiritual warfare is necessary in our Christian journey, in our life in Christ as people who are engrafted in Jesus Christ, as believers, as warriors, as people of destiny, as kingdom citizens, as people who are in God's plan and purpose and in God's blueprint and design. So God has called us to deliverance. Deliverance is not a special ministry at the lower level. Deliverance is supposed to be for everyone, for every church, for every ministry, for every establishment, for every family, for every revival meeting, for even the prophetic revelation. In all aspect of life, deliverance permeates everything and everywhere from relationship to giving birth, procreation to direction, in other words, path and purpose and plan. Deliverance is involved in all aspects of our human endeavor. Deliverance is involved also in your spiritual work or your spiritual journey and remember, we are spirits, we have a soul, we live in an suit called a body. And because of that, God is particular about our spiritual growth and development. God is particular about how we make spiritual progress here on earth. God is very particular about how we actually mature in the spirit and see things from spiritual perspective, from spiritual viewpoint. In fact, without deliverance, many of us would not walk in our covenant rights and privileges in Christ, will not actually get to our God-given potential, we walk in our gifts, walk in our calling, walk in our vocation, and fulfill destiny and the plan and purpose of God for our life. Deliverance and spiritual warfare is necessary because of that. And that's why Jesus spent time teaching about deliverance. People didn't know that Jesus taught about deliverance more than any other topic, you know, in the Bible. In fact, to be honest with you, Jesus only taught two things. Jesus taught deliverance primarily, and then he demonstrated prayer. Because they saw him pray, they saw John the Baptist teaching on prayer. The disciple also said, Lord, teach us to pray, even as John taught his disciples. And that is... That is where we begin to have uh, the Lord's Prayer. It's not really the Lord's Prayer per se. It was a pattern of prayer. It's a blueprint. It's a template on how to pray. However, the Lord taught prayer. But before then, he demonstrated prayer by his life because he had a consistent, persistent, routine program prayer life that is very paramount in his life and ministry. So we're going to go into why God wants us to walk in deliverance. But more importantly, know everything about deliverance. And of course, prayer warfare. I want to say this. Deliverance and spiritual warfare go together and work together in unison and in tandem. And I will tell you why. Interpretation of dream. Prayer warfare, deliverance, prophecy or discernment, as well as restoration, go together. They are intricately tied. Remember, one of the things I do in this ministry is what is called the PHD. PHD stands for Prophecy, Healing, and Deliverance. Of course, before then, if you look at the back, we have of the sure word of God, which is the foundation, and that's why we teach the word, then the prayer, we cannot leave the word and prayer. They are the sure foundation before you have the prophecy, healing, and deliverance, which is the PHD. And in practical deliverance, Jesus always has deliverance sessions. In one of the deliverance sessions, 
Even the demon cried out while he was teaching. When the demon cried out, Jesus already knew what to do. Jesus already knew how to handle it. Jesus already knew what to say. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. And then as kingdom citizen, children of God, you cannot talk or teach about the kingdom without knowledge of deliverance, without knowledge of demonology, without knowledge of how the spirit realm works, without knowledge of navigating the spirit realm, without knowledge of revelation, and without knowledge of dreams to see beyond the veil because the dream world is part and parcel of the spirit realm, is part of revelation, is part of the spirit world that give us a glimpse, a fortress, or window of what is happening in our life here on earth as far as our existence and our progress, direction, discretion, and fulfilling destiny is concerned. So the whole essence of deliverance is to make us follow and flow with the Holy Spirit. And I will explain. You know, when you receive deliverance, you are actually free to fulfill the plan and purpose of God for your life. It doesn't matter whether you're a minister. It doesn't matter whether you are a student or a professional or in business or pushing one career or course for that matter. Deliverance is necessary in all areas of life, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your finances, in your relationship, in your achieving purpose, in your success, and in every endeavor of life. Deliverance is very, very important and pivotal. That's why it's hard to be effective in the kingdom if you don't know deliverance. You cannot walk in your covenant rights and privileges in Christ, your covenant blessings and breakthrough, and your divine inheritance without having knowledge of deliverance. In fact, most churches run away from deliverance because they are afraid of demons. And they also tell us things like, oh, you don't need to talk about demons. Oh, you are glorifying Satan when you talk about demons. But the Bible doesn't think like that. God doesn't think like that. In fact, Ephesians 5.11 said we should expose the works of darkness. We should reprove it. We should expose to dispose the devil. You have to locate the devil to dislocate them or dis dislocate his works. One of the reasons, actually two of the five reasons why Jesus came is to destroy the works of the devil. Not just to set the person or the captives free, but to destroy the works or the handwork or the activities or uh, maneuvers, manipulation and functions of the enemy. In fact, you cannot teach the kingdom without deliverance. You cannot have breakthrough without deliverance. You cannot fulfill your purpose or work in your full potential without deliverance. Even when you think you are doing well, you would, could have done better. Even when you think you are doing great, you would have done more than great and exceptionally good or excellent if you know about deliverance. Because what people do is to compare notes. And when God called you, let's go to, to Mark, the book of Mark. And I want to show you something here in Mark. Mark is one of the pivotal gospel, and I like the book of Mark because it goes straight to the point. I'm reading Mark 16, verse 17. Child of God. It says, And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 18. And they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Here again, we discover that healing and deliverance go together that sometimes we think that somebody is sick with a disease when a demon is actually behind the problem. Once you want to lay hand on them, burn the demon behind their problem, their issue, walking behind the scene, begin to manifest. 
So a lot of times, most people who even boast that they know deliverance or they do deliverance are not even doing it. They are just talking. They are just making assumptions because they never had a training in it. Deliverance is a training. It's not just seeing things. Because the other day, somebody told me, oh, you don't speak to demons. Why are you talking to demons? And that Jesus did not speak to demons. And I laugh. Let's go back to the book of Mark because I like Mark. Uh, I want to read Mark 5. I think I have to read it here in another deliverance session because Jesus did a lot of it. And he, he thought extensively on deliverance because he knows the root or where the root of the problem lies. And the cure for any problem is in the cause. I'm reading 5. I want to go to 8. First verse 8. He says, I think I can back up a little bit. I can back up a little bit. I can back up a little bit. This is the gathering demoniac. Mark chapter 5. And listen to this because it's one of the deliverance sessions of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, and they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. So this man basically lived in, in the graveyard, in the cemetery. And no man could bind him, no, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Of course, you can't tame demon, you can't chain demon. They are spirits. Five. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Six, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, that son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. Let, let me show you something here, child of God. You know, a lot of people think that immediately Jesus cast out the demon as always. But that's not what the Bible said here. In fact, under translation said, Jesus kept on speaking to the man. New American Standard Version. Come out. But the demon didn't re refuse to come out. People don't follow the Bible. They read the Bible, but they don't read in the Bible. This is in front of Jesus. This is in the presence of Jesus. This is why Jesus was there. The demon even bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Showing you that Jesus was recognized by demons and demoniacs. Yet the religious leaders... And the congregation of his day didn't recognize him, but the demons did. The evil spirits did. The evil forces did because they know who is who. But because man looks at the outward appearance, you would have thought that immediately Jesus said, come out, that this demon would have come out. The demon didn't come out. But let's see what Jesus did. Jesus talked to demons. Because people tell me, oh, Jesus did not talk to demons. Just take authority and the demon will go. Because they've never done it before. They were never trained in it. They were never told what to do. They were not told what to expect. That's why when people come for deliverance, they expect the miraculous, which I admire. But God is not a magician. There are demons that I will lay hands, boom, they go immediately. There are demons that you keep on praying and come back for follow-up and follow-through before they go. There are demons that are so wicked and so recalcitrant that God himself deals with it. And there are also demons that 
come, you have to deal with it through prayer warfare. And deliverance and prayer warfare are the same, including healing. They are intricately tied. Now, let's go back to the deliverance session once more here. Now, if you look at verse 8, you see what Jesus said. People who say Jesus didn't talk to demon. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. Did you notice that the unclean spirit did not go out? He did not budge. He did not leave. He hesitated. He didn't even go. Let's see what Jesus did next. Nine. And he asked him, What is thy name? That means Jesus tried to cast out the demon, tell the demon to come out. The demon did not come out. Jesus now engaged the demon in a discussion to break down the resistance, to break down the demonic delay, to break down the demonic uh, statement. And look at what Jesus said. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So it then means that the lead demon is the one speaking. The head demon is the one that say, we are many. Because all of them couldn't have been speaking at the same time. And the legion is anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000. It's a legion. So that this one man has so many demons in him. So the demon speaking here must have been the lead or the chief demon among them. Who is their spokesperson. Now look at what happened next. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. In other words, they walk the area. They don't want to go somewhere else anymore. And look at what Jesus said. Now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him. Now look at now. The demon now, the legion now uh, come out. Now he's no longer the lead demon. Now all the de demons, look at 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Wow. He's no longer one. All the demons now, the legion now are talking all at the same time. So why would Jesus listen to them? Not only did he listen to them, he even negotiated with them, which we don't even do. So when people are saying, oh, Jesus did not do this. Look, another time, Jesus even prayed for somebody twice. And this is God in the flesh. In fact, another time, he asked the boy's father. He said, from how long, from when did this thing happen? The Godfather said, ever since he was a boy, that the demon threw him in water, and then he threw him in the uh, fire, and tried to destroy the boy's life. He said, if you will, Lord, if you can do anything to help us, help us. Jesus said, do you believe? He said, I believe, but help them my unbelief. So here again, I'm just comparing notes, you know, tying scripture with scripture, marrying scripture with scripture. All the head said, send us into the swine, and let's see what Jesus did. 13. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. In other words, Jesus gave them permission. How can you give somebody permission when you, when he didn't discuss anything with you? In other words, Jesus allowed them. Jesus granted them their request. So, if you notice here, and that is said, and forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. It's a fancy word of saying he granted them their request. And the unclean spirits, plural, went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Wow. So I wanted to show you here some uh, ch children of God. That when people are not trained in deliverance, they begin to make assumptions. And the mother of all mistakes is assumption. So it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor. It doesn't matter whether you're a teacher. It doesn't matter whether you're an evangelist. It doesn't matter whether you're a prophet or even 
an apostle, most of them, even the people that call themselves bishops, were never trained in deliverance. And that has been the problem with the body of Christ. And that's why when they see demon manifesting, they don't know what to make of it. They start writing nonsense in social media because they never knew nothing. They never saw it in their church. So in fact, some people even pray to demons and beg demons. But child of God, remember, in deliverance, we don't beg demons. We don't pray to demons. We don't even respect demons. We don't cajole demons. The Lord did it, but I don't negotiate with them. But do I talk with them? Yes. See, people say, oh, Jesus did it once. Well, what about Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. It was not one deliverance session, according to theologians. So that's why there are people, don't get me wrong, when they come with the power of God that he gave me, I lay hand on them, boom, things happen. They get their total deliverance. Their dreams change. Their situation and circumstances normalize. They get their breakthrough. They see miracles because deliverance is a miracle ministry. They begin to see their miracle of turnaround. They begin to walk in their inheritance. The people who are not employed get jobs. The people who are looking for admission that have been blocked all this while, God gave them victory and breakthrough. The business that couldn't work out begin to walk. Favors begin to come. Doors open. Heavens open. Angels begin to walk like crazy. Finances begin to come. People who rejected you before, application that were rejected, or paperwork, or certificate, or something you were looking for, or course that you are looking for, or permit you are looking for, or documents that you need, come after deliverance because the yoke of delay the demonic hindrance or opposition or bondage or yoke or shackle has been removed there's liberation there's freedom now to fulfill destiny to walk in your spiritual express lane to walk in divine direction and discretion to have your inheritance for your finances for your increase open heaven and open doors so that's why we say deliverance is a miracle ministry a lot of time when people have not experienced deliverance they keep on making excuses. They will tell you things that, oh, it's not for everybody. Oh, uh, deliverance is passed it's in the Old Testament. Oh, or you can deliver yourself. And I'm not saying you can deliver yourself, but most often, doctors don't heal themselves. Sometimes doctors can't even help themselves. Sometimes it's only when somebody now lay hand on you, when you are manifesting, that he can control and cast out the demon. So how can you cast out the demon that is in you when you are manifesting? See, that is the problem. You did save deliverance, hoping that prayer will stop it. But do you know most often the demons have learned how to resist your prayers. They've learned how to block prayers. They've learned and seen your weaknesses. They've seen your character flaws. They've seen the loophole. They have a legal grant. They have a legal right. So only that doctor who knows what he's doing who recognizes another doctor will take his children to the doctor and wait in the waiting room for the another doctor to look at his kids. Because he may be a gynecologist. He's a women doctor, right? But the kids need children doctor, pediatrician. So the man will go there. That's why we call it patient. When you go there, you got to be patient. You wait at the waiting room. And then the doctor will see you, run all the tests, do all the... See, in deliverance, the same way, there are different levels and realms and dimensions of deliverance. Some people are delivered from background problems or ancestral forces or household wickedness. Some people have seen it recently and it's been there all this while from witchcraft and bondage. There's witchcraft everywhere. In fact, witchcraft is so prevalent that is everywhere in the church, in the workplace, in the household, everywhere. But people don't know because the church never dealt with it. In fact, up to now, the church is confused. They are bemused. They are uh, at a loss on what to do about witchcraft. They don't, they don't have a clue. 
And people come with reason that, oh, leave the person uh, that's in your village. There's nothing like witchcraft. Oh, this is America. Oh, why would people do such things? Oh, it's superstitious. So some people say things like, oh, you know, uh, it's, it's tricks, magic tricks. Oh, it's all in the head. No, witchcraft is real. It's the power base of Satan. Satan cannot do without witchcraft. And witchcraft is not an African word. It's an English word. That means it's found in every culture. Hispanic call it uh, Santeria. Okay? There are places, it's sorcery. Some other places, necromancy. Some other places, uh, places it, could, it could be uh, uh, sciences. Even New Age is a form of witchcraft. Hinduism, Buddhism, most of them have link with some form of witchcraft. So, there are different levels. Bands of wickedness is, is, is demon. Occult bondage and deliverance is there. A lot of things people dabble into, they don't even know it's witchcraft and it's there. So that's why we need training in deliverance. That's why we need training. And not only the training, that you need the power to deal with these demons, to confront them head on. Because if you don't have power, you will not do anything. If you don't have power, you won't excel. If you don't have power, you won't succeed. If you don't have power, you won't destroy, remove, eliminate, exterminate, banish, vanquish, and then cast out these demons and make them stay at bay. Because the church lack power, they make excuses. Yet yeah, Jesus has given us all power. He has given us the authority. He has given us the dominion to trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Another thing is that you have to know when you need help. Because a lot of times, people don't even know when they need help. They think they can do it all themselves. And what I found out in deliverance, and most often, is that a lot of children of God are not fortified in God. See, they are not strong in the Word. And then praying in the Holy Ghost. And praying the Word. Two most important things. In Ephesians 6, the Bible said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his word. In the power of the spirit. Being strong in the word is being strong in the Bible. Being strong in the scriptures. Being strong in the spirit is to be strong in prayer in the Holy Ghost. And Ephesians 6, 18 said, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watch thereunto with all perseverance for all sins. So these are necessary. Apostle Paul said we will not leave the word of God to serve the devil. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. So, and there are things too that you need common sense to decipher. If you've been trying to do self-deliverance and it doesn't work and you didn't see any change. It's simple common sense to look for somebody with a greater anointing in that area. And let me tell you, when you start in deliverance, you start as a deliverance worker. Most often, people call deliverance minister. I'm not a deliverance minister. I'm, a, I'm an apostle. See, see, deliverance minister is at a lower level. But you start as a deliverance worker, as a believer. Because the Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. So you start as a believer. Now, people are looking for power. But what I found out is that if you don't get started in the ministry of deliverance, the power will not come. The greater power will come later than the road. God will protect you. God will shield you. God will preserve you. God will give you reinforcement of his angel to... to Actually support your work, support the ministry, support the anointing, support the grace, support the higher dimension of the virtue in that area. Because the healing and deliverance anointing go together. So down the road, God cannot give you special anointing to deal with heavy duty demons. But on a lower level, every believer is supposed to be a deliverer. Because according to where we read in Mark, Say, this sign shall follow them that believe. In other words, how do we know believer? It's because they cast out demons. That's the kingdom. So if you want to know the sign 
or the third test sign or a pointer or the mark of a believer is that he believes in casting out demons. But do you know today, 99% of churches don't even believe in casting out demons because they think that the demons either went on holiday to Africa and India and then the demons are not in the United States and I ask them, what is responsible for drive-by shooting? What's responsible for incarceration? What's responsible for drugs and inner city murder and homicide and, and suicide? What is responsible for breakage of families and destroying uh, you know, the family dynamics and the family unit and dysfunctional family? What is responsible for uh, you know, getting pregnant out of wedlock and the, the cost of the bastard and illegitimacy that's everywhere, half of the bird? What is responsible for that? It's the same demon. What's responsible for accidents, even with all the safety measures, is demons. Because accidents are the work of bloodthirsty demons. What is responsible for all kinds of uh, mayhem you see in the inner city and beyond? is demons. There are some community and neighborhood you go, everywhere is ramshackle, devastated, dilapidated, and deteriorating. Because drugs have messed up the place. The... the, the Property value falls and all that. So that is what we need to know, child of God. So the training is in different levels and dimension. But the best way to learn how to train is to be or do it the old-fashioned way through what is called discipleship. From discipleship, then you can be a deliverance worker. If you are interested in that area of ministry on a higher level, but on lower level is everybody. Then from deliverance worker to deliverance minister. From deliverance minister, you cannot become a deliverance prophet or apostle gifted in the area of deliverance. And that's how God will give you graces and anointing as you move forward and the more experience you have. Child of God, what I have it's exactly what you have. The only thing that is different is because I've done it longer. I'm more experienced in it. See, you have the same Jesus. You have the same power. You have the same Holy Spirit. You have the same anointing. But on different level, on different dimension, on different realms. So if you're a deliverance prophet or apostle, you have a slightly higher level of anointing to go with that office and the more you do it the more you get better at it the more god give you more authority and dominion in the area remember what the demon told the sons of skiva he said paul i know jesus i know who are you that means there is name recognition in the spirit that means there is hierarchy that means there is a realm of distinction in the realm of the spirit when it comes to casting out devil and let me tell you also, deliverance is not only casting out devils. That is the elementary level. There are areas of dealing with authors and foundational problems, ancestral powers. There are areas of dealing with witchcraft and household wickedness, domestic witchcraft, territorial witchcraft, workplace witchcraft, neighborhood witchcraft, marine witchcraft, necromancy, sorcery, and all that. There's the area of occultism, occult bondage and deliverance. There's the area of new age, very popular among the youth. There's the area of Wicca. There's the area of Santoria. So there are different aspects and dimensions of witchcraft that God wants you to deal with. Even areas that people suffer like sleepwalking, sleep talking, Somnambulism, and then bedwetting, eating non-nutritious things. I've seen people eat charcoal, people eat chalk, people eat urine, people eat styrofoam, people eat eraser, people eat uncooked rice, people eat ant heel, people pulling their hair and eating it. People eating clothes. So those are all forms or areas of deliverance. 
So God has made it in such a way that deliverance permeates all areas. And every believer, every minister, every pastor, regardless of title or status, need to know how to do deliverance. Unfortunately, people who claim to do deliverance have not been training it. They don't know nothing about it. They are just making claims. They claim they are teaching the truth. But we also need to demonstrate the truth. We also need to showcase the truth. We also need to display the truth. We also need to live the truth. The truth has to become flesh. Remember, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. It's easy to talk about grace and the word. But what about the truth and demonstration of the truth? The Bible said the truth you know to do is the truth that sets you free. Because people say, oh, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. No, it is the truth you know to do that sets you free. And people quote that true knowledge that shall my people be delivered. Do you know the kind of knowledge he's talking about? He's talking about experiential knowledge. He's talking about higher knowledge, epigonosco. He's talking about knowledge based on practical application. Knowledge based on encounter. It's not knowledge of theory that you Google something or you recite it or you have mental accent. No, this is the knowledge where the word became flesh where you are a witness, where you've done it before, where you've tried it, where you've done it, where you've practicalized to actualize in order to materialize it, like I'll say. So that is the thing, child of God. We're going to go into deliverance proper. God bless you. We're going to pray for our audience. I'm going to pray for our people, those watching us online. Father, we thank you. Bless you for your people. We thank you for them listening. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor of God. Touch your people at the very point of their need. And Father, if they have any need, as far as deliverance is concerned, Father, touch your people. Even if they don't come to deliverance proper, Lord God, you are the ultimate deliverer. You are the deliverer of deliverers. You are the healer. You are our fighter. You are our father. You are our trailblazer. You are a man of war. A warrior who have never lost any battle. The ultimate warrior. We thank you. Bless you, Father God. We give you praise. Equip your people, O God. Energize us, O God. You've given us the power and authority to trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. And we are assured and reassured that nothing shall by any means hurt us. The same grace, the same virtue, the same impartation I give to your people, O God, that they will go and do exploits. They will go and advance and expand your kingdom. They will go and demonstrate the reality of the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you. Touch your people at the very point of their need. Thank you for deliverance in all areas, oh God. In our spirit, in our soul, in our body, in our relationship, in our finances. In every endeavor that you called us to fulfill purpose. So that we can walk in freedom. In our covenant rights and privileges in Christ. And our covenant blessing. Thank you, King of Glory, for praying in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.